This is a little demonstration of some of the upcoming changes to the Engine Driver app, specifically around the way loco selection works using DCC addresses, roster entries, and recents. So if I just start Engine Driver and connect to a local server, uh, I'm running one of the dark themes with the vertical sliders, but it works exactly the same way with the original theme. If I select a loco, the default is still a DCC address, um, and if I type in a DCC address, I will oops, I just want 722 and acquire. Um, this is immediately different because I already have uh, three uh, chips, three um, devices with that address in my roster, but instead of bringing up one of the three, which is what it would have previously done, it's brought up just the address and the default labels for the function buttons that I've got the set for the um, for engine driver and not the function labels of any of the devices I've got in the roster. So if I see the difference I'm going to go to my roster and I just search for 722 and I can see that I've got those three uh, addresses, three uh, entries in the roster all of with the 722 address in them. I'm just going to pick the, the sound box uh, and you can see I've got a completely different set of function buttons. And again, I'll show you the difference uh, if I just release that and select uh, that one. That one doesn't have a sound chip in it, all it's got is lights, uh, so it knew the difference in it. it, um, it um, yep. So I'll just release those. And if I have a look now and go to my recents, I can see that it actually has recorded all three of those separately. Previously it would have only just recorded one as 722. Uh, and you can see that's the, the entered version and it's got a little symbol there of a, of a, um, a bracket on its side uh, representing that it was entered. Uh, and the other two were selected from the roster and they've got a little hamburger menu type thing of three, three bars. Um, and I can select one of those directly by just clicking on it as usual and it's brought up the correct function buttons for it. And again, if I go back there and select a different one, it understands the difference and it's brought up the correct buttons for, for each of those as if you had selected them from the roster, whereas previously it would have just picked the first one with that address. Um, if I go on from there, I'll just release those. For anything that I've entered manually, I can rename it. So if I long press on it, it pops up with a little edit and it allows me to give it to to um, give it a name so I can see in my list that it is actually different. You can see it in the little address at the top of it it's still exactly the same uh, but it now um, has a it shows up differently I can give it a name that's meaningful to me. Uh, the other thing that's been added now is um, oh sorry, just clear that out of the roster. The other thing that's been added is recent consists. So in the same way that it previously remembered locos that have been selected, it now remembers consists that have been entered. So I'm going to create a quick consist containing uh, those three locos. So that one, go back in, that one, back it, and one more. Back out of there and I'm immediately going to release that. If I want to select those three locos again, I can now go to the recent consist list and it will show up those three locos as something I have entered. And if I click on it, it will bring up all three locos in one hit. And, um, and in the same way that I can um, rename a, an entered uh, DCC address, I can also rename this. So if I hop into here and give it a more meaningful name, Oops, can't type. It shows up that way, so if I release it, and I can just flip that and I get my, my three 280s in one go.